Hello from the Ozarks. This is Eve Star with Eve Star Fiber Arts. And this is a beautiful, <laughs> the bird agrees, a beautiful Wednesday, uh, May 10th, 2017. And I'm going to have to break this up into about three short videos, partly because of our DSL and partly because they're for kind of three different reasons. I've got a page on my Facebook page, in fact, a couple, uh, that's a Fiber Arts for Kids. And it's a free fiber arts education uh, and crafts class. When I was in middle school and even younger than that, um, my girlfriends and I would love to go get uh, cruel kits and things for crochet. I didn't crochet yet. I taught myself a lot later than that. But um, anyway, that was something we always did. And when I think of summer vacation coming and the kids on their devices um, makes me kind of sad. So I've got some thing ideas to offer if you got kids getting out of school, if you have homeschoolers, and even for yourself. Um, the, the section I'm going to be doing about chronic pain, and uh, I have a lot of friends who are suffering from chronic pain and don't know how to you know, pass the time when it's really bad. Uh, I'll show you what I do. So all of these things for adults, kids, if you want something done quickly or for a gift, uh, these are great. So I'll start with these little ones here. These are cruel embroidery kits. And if you don't know what cruel is, it's a type of embroidery where you use um, this kind of wool yarn rather than a skinny, only skinny embroidery thread. This is the kind you would use for cross stitch. And you can also use it in cruel embroidery too for details or sometimes for a satin stitch. For a pretty flower or something but as you know uh, you've got to strip this into separate um, separate plies and then it's a little bit trickier to work with it can knot up a little bit more and it takes a little bit longer so if you do something like this a uh, little cruel picture it's c-r-e-w-e-l cruel embroidery and i'm going to be offering a history on cruel embroidery on the, the class too so you homeschoolers it, it would be a nice little history and culture thrown in there, sociology even. But this is a little hummingbird picture, and um, I've got it on stretcher bars. And I prefer those. I've got hoops, and these are like top-of-the-line beautiful wooden hoops. They're not the, the bamboo kind that splinter. I wrap mine in bias tape so it doesn't damage the fabric, and also uh, so you can get it even tighter. And these have a really good screw, a thumb screw, that you can tighten really well. My daughter uses these. Uh, she designs her own cross stitch. But I prefer these stretcher bars and they come in separate little bars like this and they're inexpensive and you use them over and over again. So like for a 5 by 7 picture you would use a 2 7 inch and 2 9 inch because you want it to be a little bit bigger than your finished picture. This is going to be a finished 5 by 7 but the edges of what we're working on will get a little bit damaged no matter how careful you are. So it's better if the finished picture is inside of that. So this is, I've got 7 by 9 stretcher bars here. And uh, the instructions on these are just fantastic. I've got a kit opened up here that's for me. This is this Rainforest kit. And uh, this one's from 1979. In fact, I saved this. This is the, uh, you could send away for the frame. Post No postage necessary. I'm, I'm just really tempted to mail that in and see what happens but it comes in a package like this this one's a big one this is going to be 16 by 20 and I used to knock these out like crazy in my late teens early 20s and uh, this brand is excellent sunset stitchery they print the fabric in shaded kind of patterns you see like there's a solid there and some dots there and so when you're working you can see really well what you're doing and you can see why that would be so easy for kids or, or anyone. If you're distracted, you want to watch TV, and you don't want to have to watch a chart or anything. Speaking of charts, they do have stitch charts. This one is um, very similar to the fabric itself. And it's got a little key there. Very clear. And then there's even a detailed one for the 3D stitches that come out. Because these ferns and things... Um, see these ferns down here? And these loopy ferns up here are all 3D. In fact, um, when I make it, I'm going to add even more. Oh, those chain stitches are too. But I'm going to add like beads and other things like I did on my rooster. Oops, I'm losing my directions. I have to go find those later. But um, these come out of the picture in a 3D way. And so those are the last stitches that you do. And again, if you use stretcher bars, you're not going to damage them. 
So these are for specifically for those uh, 3D stitches. And here you see the detailed directions here. I didn't know it was breezy. My goodness. But anyway, you, you've got very nice directions in these. And the, I, uh, whenever I sell these, I open them up. Uh, first of all, I take the needle out because it's usually buried in the fabric. Bad idea. You don't want it to rust. I check all the yarn to make sure that it's still strong and it hasn't weakened over time. And then I repackage them. And so all of these over here that you see, uh, all of these 5x5s and 5x7s have been inspected by me and repackaged carefully. So you know that they're, they're in excellent shape. I won't sell them if they're not. This is the smallest size I sell. This is a 5x5. Five five, and this would be really easy for anyone to knock out. And these also have the 3D stitches. The tails are like a 3D and they're so cute. And again, they have the very same directions, very easy with charts. These are partially printed. Uh, you see the leaves in the background. It's up to you if you want to stitch them or leave them as a shadow. If you're a new stitcher, I would leave them so you'd be done quicker. Uh, I would have fun and stitch them in and outline them a little bit with something. So that is, is those. And to organize your yarn, there's some different options. And I like a palette system like this. Uh, you could take a pencil and number it if you need to. There's a little magnet for the needle. And if you're doing it for a child, you can help get them started so that their their stuff doesn't get tangled. And then they're they're all set to go from there. Uh, also, I have these gorgeous uh, curl yarns. This was a real score. Somebody had a shop and they saved them all. And these were all moth proofed, so they're fine all these years later. This is my favorite type of curl yarn here. It's a really thin wool. You don't have to separate it. Sometimes with the curl, you have to separate the three strands. It's thin and it's soft, and they come in these gradients so that you can shade it beautifully. There's something called long and short stitch that's wonderful for shading, and I'll show that in a how-to episode on stitches. And then there's also these braids that I offer where it's already cut in a one-yard length, which is perfect. For most people, you don't want it any longer because the yarn shreds just a tad every time you pull it through. Same thing with um, cross stitch. When you're using the cotton floss, every time you pull a stitch through, it's going to shred just a little bit and damage that yarn. So the longer it is, uh, that's not a good idea because it'll end up starting to twist and knot and you wonder what's wrong with it. So we've got the gradients here and you just take one at the top, hold on to the rest, pull it out, and it's ready to go. So I've got those available in a number of colors and uh, I'll show you those in another video, but those are going into the shop. And I'm going to wrap up because this is pretty much it for the stitchery. This is a little needle book that I made and uh, I use a little low tech uh, little string that goes around this little heart. And I made a little magnet, added that for my needle threader and different pages in my, my favorite fabric over there. And uh, my daughter uses this all the time. She's always taken off with it. I stiffened it with some um, plastic canvas that you use for uh, like a needle point. And uh, just stitch it by hand one day when I was just feeling like I needed to do something. Uh, and then just to wrap it up, I'll show you some other ones I pulled out. Down here we have um, a large... This one is mostly printed. So you really don't have a lot of stitching to do, which is great for in, impatient people or new people. And I love French knots. Oh, you can do so much with them. That's what this tree is. And they're a lot of fun. And I've come up with a way to make them that is just foolproof. And they're easy and fast. And So I'll have a little tutorial on that. But this, this background is printed. And then you uh, stitch whatever details you want to stitch. There's some 3D ferns. And like I said, I would add a little bit more just to have fun. And so uh, this one's available in the shop. This is called Oriental Pool. And uh, it has another one that goes with it, this little, that, like this, a 5x7. And then this big 10x20 panel. And that's the same way. It's mostly printed. This one is so sweet. This one would be perfect for a nursery. It's called Babes in the Wood. It, all the tails are 3D on this one. The little squirrel. The bunnies. Oh, it's so cute. And... Again, you've got your detailed directions. It's just fantastic to work with. It's a 16 by 16. You can make this into a pillow for like a rocking chair in a nursery. 
or um, somebody loves nature and they're all grown up, this would be a gorgeous pillow, uh, or a wall hanging. And I love those circle ones where it looks like you're looking into a scene. And then over here, I've got a couple that I'm working on. Uh, this is called, I don't know, it's Phoenix from the Ashes kind of thing. Phoenix Rising, I think. This is called Jacobian Cruel. This is from a certain period in history, uh, about the time of the Jacobite Revolution in Scotland. Again, we'll save that for a, a homeschooling sneaky history lesson. But uh, this is a lot of fun. These aren't exactly the colors I always choose. I like things to be a little bit more intense. But you see here, again, using stretcher bars. And that might seem awkward because it's big, but there's not a mark on it because of that. And to me, it's easy. I, I like using them. And here's an oldie. In fact, I would have thought of this as just two 70s for me, but I found this one here. I'll pick that up. This is a little 5x5 five five version, and I changed all the stitches. I took this volume here that is my favorite embroidery stitch. It's an oldie. It's uh, reprinted. It's real cheap. Mary Thomas's embroidery stitches. It's just fantastic, and now it's in color. When I had it, it was not. It was an oldie. It's got everything from canvas stitches that you use in needlepoint to just embroidery stitches, cut work, cross stitch. It's got it all. And then here, I just took stitches from there and I just wung it. I winged it. I just made it the way I wanted to. And uh, this is a little 5x5. Five five. I'm going to give it as a gift. Maybe make it into a little pin cushion pillow for needles. And put a little bit of emery inside to keep the needles clean. And then here's the big version. I've got it in two different ones. I've got it in this cruel. And again, I've taken stitches out of there, out of the stitch dictionary, and just doing it the way I want to with some scrap yarn from Leftover Projects. And this has been a whole lot of fun. And then um, I've got it in needlepoint, which I'm selling this one because uh, I just don't have time for needlepoint. But needlepoint is really fun. And this one has a lot of different stitches. It's not just your basic, you know, tent stitch. This has all kinds of stitches. So that's available too. This one is 16 by 16. Same thing would be a fantastic pillow for a retro couch. I would add some more colors, but this gold on gold uh, monochrome scheme could be perfect for somebody who's got a, a muted house with like grays and steel color. And then this would be a nice pop of retro gold. So I'm going to wrap up. This has gotten longer than I expected as always. Here's a couple that I was working on for me. Some 5x7 birds with a pretty border. And this is the same as this one here. And the border goes in there. And you can put your initials in. So it's similar to those. So I'm going to wrap up now and save these for another one. I'm Oh, that, the waterfalls. Got to show you those. This is a retro 1950s, to me, that's a mid-century modern look. And that one's for me. I can't part with it. It's perfect for this house with the rocks and the waterfall and the pine. And it's just perfect. And then this is an autumn waterfall. And I love French knots so and birches. So I'll be saving that one, too. But there'll be other ones in the shop. And I'll be sharing some of these other things uh, for summer. So that'll be a different video. So I'll wrap up for now. Thank you for sticking with me. And thank you for um, joining my uh, my YouTube channel, subscribing. All of y'all who've done that, it's just wonderful. And uh, if you subscribe, I get an email and I'll send you a code that will get you a big fat discount in my shop. As a thank you for joining along and being patient. And uh, for now, we're just going to sign off. This is Eve Star Malay. And we'll see you soon.